So behind all architecture is a simple design concept. Some are amazing and inspiring and others are poor. The concept behind architecture really separates the banal buildings we see and the absolutely <laughs> incredible buildings that leave a lasting impression on us. And trust me, there's a lot of banal buildings out there. CVS, Walmart, <laughs> McDonald's. These buildings are really a part of daily life for a lot of people here. Instead, architecture, good, good architecture with a solid concept behind it allows occupants to experience architecture in its most basic beautiful form. But how do you even develop a concept? If you're new, I understand how frustrating it is. And today I will be going over how to actually develop a concept. I am also going to be introducing you guys to my personal favorite building. And it is the Jewish Museum in Berlin. Germany. It's designed by Liebskin, and if you don't know him as an architect, he also designed the One World Trade Center in New York City. So Liebskin's project was a building expansion to the existing Jewish Museum, and his proposal was the only one in the entire architecture competition that implemented kind of radical design concepts to the existing building. And basically, his building alone represents what life is like for Jewish communities and people before during and after the Holocaust. From a conceptual standpoint, the building expresses feelings of isolation, loneliness, emptiness, invisibility, along with the disappearance of Jewish culture. And the core concept here is to take visitors and occupants along this journey. Therefore, the museum becomes an experience and people have their own personal response to this to the architecture and to the story that's being told through architecture. The concept behind it is just, it's, it's breathtaking, it really is. So even when looking at the form itself, he abstracted and deconstructed the Jewish star. And this deconstructed abstracted star serves as a historical timeline of events throughout the museum. So pulling it back into today, I will be referencing his work into how you can actually develop a design concept and what questions you can ask yourself to incorporate into your own design project. Because architecture and design fundamentally serves the occupants and people actually experiencing the architecture, that's really where we want to start. And there's always going to be this plethora of problems your architectural design has to solve and address, but let's just slow things down and take things one thing at a time. Your concept shouldn't address all of these problems. It's actually a lot better if your concept is more broad and it can just kind of blanket over these problems, right? Whatever design prompt you're given will typically always have problems. So when your concept is super organic, that means it can actually, in a very fluid and dynamic way, address things. And also, for your concept, you're probably going to produce a variety of party and conceptual diagrams. So going back to Liebskin's building, his concept is really bringing visitors along this progression and a timeline of historical events by expressing what it felt like through the architecture experiencing traditional Jewish life before, during, and after the Holocaust. His concept wasn't deconstructing the Star of David and that's where he got his form from. The actual concept was bringing people on a journey and having the architectural expression of the museum actually illustrate and elicit explicit feelings from the occupants to relate to what people actually went through and endured, really. Now, you're given your design prompt and your challenge, and there are several components you need to consider. But I like to look at it with just three key factors in mind. So, number one is going to be your site. Number two, history, and number three is the user experience, sight. So you need to consider your surroundings, how the sun interacts with your sight, how the wind moves with your sight. Is it very public? Is it private? Daylighting affects every building, whether we want it to or not. Really do a lot of sight analysis when you are in these preliminary design stages. Two, history. 
Everything has history attached to it. It's everywhere. Now, if you are designing a history museum like Leapskin is, it's definitely easier to kind of find and draw inspiration from the history because the artifacts displayed at the museum already tell you what the history is really focused in on. But regardless, even if you're designing in an urban fabric, some tower, there's always going to be history behind any urban landscape. So I would encourage you to do a lot of research on the site itself but also the historical influences and why that skyline or landscape looks the way it does. Furthermore, if you have a complex building typology you're designing for, also consider analyzing precedent studies. Precedent studies are a great way to orient yourself with types of formal architectural expressions that were already done. It's great to draw inspiration from other projects and you can determine what you're drawn to and what works for you in your mind and what didn't. But you can also look at the future as well. It's not just always looking back. In the future, how do you want landscapes to look? Or you could even make commentary on certain historical events and you could either bring attention to something that was suppressed. Basically, it's all up to your interpretation and that's the fun part about architecture. And three is user experience. At the end of the day, it's the user who will be interacting with these spaces. You also want to consider what is the overall goal of the project, what program requirements does this project have, and how will that influence the user? What kinds of people are actually going to be interacting with this project. So if you're designing a school, you aren't really going to see elders, right, walking the school or anything like that. It's a different program. Same thing as if you're designing a hospital, completely different program than an elementary school, right? Basically, you just want to understand that actual human beings are going to be occupying spaces. You want to question how people will circulate and how people will move around your spaces that you design. How do people interact? How does the architecture foster interaction between people or doesn't? All great questions to ask during this conceptual phase and it's definitely necessary. Now, how, where do you start? How do you even start? You asked all these questions, you're thinking a lot, which is great to see. I always start with the site. I visit the site if I am able. If you are not, Google Earth is a great tool to use just to better understand the site. I do so many messy diagrams on trace paper and it Messy is better. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's actually better if you almost use bubbles and blocks to block out program. It doesn't have to look pretty, but now's a great time to start implementing some form of logic and your preliminary answer to all of these questions you did in this research and thinking phase. Consider how the wind is moving. Consider how the building is oriented in relationship to the sun rising and setting. How public is it? How private do you want your building to be? Building placement is definitely everything. You can make a building look very visible or obscure. Completely up to you and it's really great to do a bunch of site analysis here. That way you can test multiple things and see what works for you and what doesn't. So going back to Liebskin's work, right? He abstracted the Star of David and that gives the building outline a very zigzag look. This resulted in him creating a zigzag promenade which people can go and interact with. Interstitial spaces in architecture are always a great technique architects use to elicit some form of emotion from occupants. So I highly recommend somehow incorporating interstitial spaces between architectural expression. Next would be analyzing the building program. The site and the building program will always have to be interrelated somehow and that's up to you to figure out. Understand the relationship between a public program and private program as well. How are they related to each other and how are different types of building occupants interacting with public space and private space? What is their relationship together? Now your next step step is to construct several, and I mean several party diagrams, conceptual diagrams, and test out as much as you can. They can be super quick. You can do a speed round where you draw 20 in 20 minutes. Sketch out several and go crazy. Draw inspiration from the site. How is the architecture situated on the site? How does your proposed building interact with the existing buildings already there? How does your building integrate with the natural lighting conditions there? How does your building interact with topography changes? and shifts in elevation. Draw inspiration from history. Architecture can make commentary on history. We've seen it in Liebskin's work and we've seen it in a bunch of other architectural expressions. So if you want to go that route, go for it. What do you want to convey? Do you want to bring your occupants in 
some form of a journey. And remember, architecture has this incredible power of eliciting um, an emotional response. And lastly, draw on the user experience. Now, sometimes the best concepts actually work backwards because architects want the user to feel this, and then they factor in the history and site behind it. And basically, you just want to ask yourself how users interact with the space and how you want people to feel and in a way work backwards. How can your architectural expression foster this? Also question how materials also come into play. You can definitely use your knowledge of materials to your advantage. You know what cold spaces look like and what materials elicit a colder feeling response versus a warm tone space which makes you feel all warm and fuzzy inside. Now if you notice in Leapskin's work with the Jewish Museum, his concept actually covers all three things. He did heavy site analysis. He clearly paid attention to history and how architectural expression can actually create a physical historical timeline for people to actually experience. And when people are experiencing it, they have a emotional response to the architecture. His concept, his core concept actually applies to all three points. The users are really left with such a touching, touching experience and I want to go experience it so badly just because I feel like the pictures don't do this space justice. He did a fantastic job. What a project.